I am Dr. Parimala Devi, gynecologist and colposcopist. I am working for Parimala Healthcare on Banergata Road and also I am a senior consultant at Fortis Hospital Banergata Road. I will be highlighting lot of important things on pap smear and colposcopy. What is this pap smear? I think you all know about cervical cancer. The cancer in women which kills them to the maximum number is cervical cancer. Even though off late there is breast cancer which is increasing, I would like to draw your attention. But cervical cancer is one, since ages we are trying to control this disease with lot of screening methods and uh, other mo modalities, but it is very difficult to get the people into the screening procedures where the pap smear is going to detect at least 85 percent sensitivity of the smear is there. With pap smear at the backup, if there is any abnormal report in the pap smear, then the test which can be done just to understand like whether the she has any suspicion of cancer lesions on the cervix that cervical cancer lesion because it is in a very preventive stage like we can prevent this cancer from growing into frank cancer if at all she comes for a pap smear and a colposcopy test. So, what is this colposcopy test? whatever abnormalities which have come in uh, pap smear that is the cellular pathology I am telling. It may be a abnormal cell to some extent, it may be a mild dysplasia or a moderate dysplasia or a just some one or two cells are abnormal. Then we are going to subject her for another test because we have to be very confirmative in telling her whether she has any suspicion of cancer or not. That is the time like we subject them to a test called colposcopy. See there was a time like uh, way back in 1980s or something, if a woman developed a cervical cancer or any cancer, it was something like it was a death sentence, like she would die in few years only. But now it is not so, like we can kill this cancer before it kills our woman. So, colposcopy is something like a boon like invented by Hans Hinselman in 1925 and pap smear was as uh, ancient as 1940s actually. Colposcopy became very popular only in 1916 when they started understanding these lesions on the cervix when they were seeing with acetic acid. So, the general principles of uh, this colposcopy is usually we should time up this procedure between uh, day 8 and day 12 after the periods because the cervical loss is open and mucus is very thin in this post menstruation period. So, we can really see the endocervical canal and understand is there any pathology or any lesion is developing there. So, the value of colposcopy is something like what we have seen with the naked eye, we can understand and correlate by colposcopic vision. The lesions in the naked eye when we see just generally in a speculum examination, we may not see all the abnormalities. But when we go through the colposcopic examination, we can make out that there are some fine problems, fine lesions like a mosaic it may be or it may be called as a punctation, ectopy, these lesions we can make out and whether they are really going to develop into a cancerous lesion, we can understand it. So, the basics of colposcopy is our aim is to diagnose pre-malignant lesion and treat it as early as possible before it becomes a frank cancer. There are a lot of indications for colposcopy, but actually the one very important indication is a abnormal pap smear is the only indication, but people who have chronic coitus, whatever the treatment given, they are not getting relief from that or who have undergone like many pap smears, every pap smear is showing a inflammatory or in some pap smear we get a report like ASCUS we say ASCUS. All these lesions of the pap smears usually are an indication for uh, a colposcopy and also uh, in case of uh, where a woman is having multiple sexual partners if she confesses to you, she is an indication for colposcopy examination to understand that she is she developing any abnormal lesion. Here uh, you can see that there is a tray where the requirement of the instruments for a colposcopy are there. There is a speculum and uh, the cotton buds are there and some of the lotions are there here. The important lotions which are used in colposcopy are acetic acid and uh, lugol's iodine. These are some of the and there is a biopsy forceps also because if you feel that a biopsy is required, there is an abnormal lesion, immediately we use this biopsy forceps and take a biopsy and send it to the pathology. And uh, it is the histopathology report is the gold standard that is the final diagnosis that we can give to the patient and treat her accordingly. 
So, the method of this uh, colposcopy is like once she is in the lithotomy position with a speculum inside, we are going to clean the cervix with a saline and once we clean the cervix with a saline and then we are going to observe this squamocornar junction. You can see here, this squamocornar junction is very important because the uh, cells, the patholo pathology which is seen near the cervical ass is corner epithelium. Here it is squamous epithelium that is a smooth pinkish epithelium. This is a grape like appearance. So, you can see here the squamocornar junction. This is a very very important uh, line we will have to recognize because this is the place like where the abnormal lesions can start growing. So, recognizing this squamocornar junction is very very important in the beginning for a novice colposcopist because if you do not understand this you are not going to recognize any abnormal areas on the cervix. Here you can see there are a lot of transformations on this you have to get familiar any colposcopist have to get familiar with the transformation zone because usually patients are quite computer savvy and they usually understand these terminologies and come and ask you what they do not understand that time you should be able to explain to them what is transformation zone because transformation zone is very very important to recognize this pre invasive cancer lesions. Here you can see on the cervix that there are 1, 2, 3 this marking is done. This is a old squamocolumnar junction, this is a new squamocolumnar junction. The area between these two is called as transformation zone as the name suggests it is transforming from one epithelium to the other epithelium. When they are changing from one epithelium to the other epithelium as a process of healing that is the time like some cells can get converted to cancer cells because of some carcinogenic action that may be HPV virus or may be repeated trauma, multiple deliveries or poor vaginal hygiene, multiple infections or multiple sexual partners, seminal infections all these things and if it is if they are very immunocompromised if they are having any AIDS or HIV infections, human uh, immunodeficiency virus all these people are more prone for cervical cancer lesions. So, once we study the transformation zone we will understand that whether she is having a normal cervix or not, then we will be actually explaining to her what is the health status of her cervical tissue. Because any irritation, infection, hormones, especially in hormone when it comes to hormones, it is the menopausal women also are more prone for these virus infections because there are a lot of hormonal shift in the postmenopausal women. And irritation is something what I told like the repeated exposure to. Uh, sexual contact all these things can be a predisposing or a cofactors even the smoking cofactors for uh, uh, leading her to a pre invasive cervical lesion. Here I am just showing some scientific uh, part of the acetic acid application when we apply the acetic acid there is one of the lotion which will be usually applied for the cervix uh, that I will be showing over a video when we apply that light which transmits will get reflect back then uh, the stroma looks very pink if it is a healthy tissue. By chance if there is an abnormal tissue when we apply this acetic acid then immediately it will not enter the deep uh, tissue stroma it will just reflect over the surface only. So, it will start looking the abnormal areas will start looking snow white or opaque white. If it is normal it will look pink now abnormal areas will look opaque or whitish lesions will start looking because there is a lack of glycogen in these tissues because of the abnormal process which is pathology which is going on. Green filter is one part of the colposcope where we use this modality when we are uh, testing the woman that will give the vascular uh, architecture whether she is having a normal vascular architecture because if there is an abnormal lesion the blood vessels and all will become criss cross or densely populated. So, green filter modulation which is done when the examination of the part of the colposcopy is very important and acetic acid uh, application which is done is about 3 to 5 percent. Liberal application of the acetic acid is very important because it causes a transient something about uh, for a minute at least uh, the we have to hold the acetic acid swab over the cervix so that it will be absorbed properly. Any lesion which appears it will come for about 2 to 3 minutes after that it disappears. Acetic acid what is it uh, does is it causes a transient uh, a coagulation of the uh, protein so that the epithelium will start looking uh, the collapse of the cell membrane will be there and the epithelium starts looking uh, dull white or very sharp and bright white color. The cellular protein component becomes white. If there is a abnormal tissue the epithelium becomes more white and the coronary epithelium which is near the opening of the cervix does not take any color whether it is acetic acid or whether it is this one because they look 
uh, grape like appearance that is the demarcation between the squamous. Whatever the transition you are seeing is over the squamous epithelium that is the metaplastic epithelium between the columnar and the squamous epithelium again we will make it clear over a video presentation. Here are some pictures which you can see how the normal surface looks here and see after the application of the acetic acid there is a white lesion at the 12 o'clock position. Here we have to study the borders of the lesion and also whether it is a bossy appearance or whether it is a very bright white sharp edges are there or geographical borders are there. These are some of the features which you will have to study as a corposcopist and here you can see some frank cancer where it is a eaten up appearance is seen with a very sharp border of the acetovite lesion. So, the acetovite acid application will note the site and the size intensity of the whiteness. Then the punctation what I said is the vascular structure. When the vascularity is more you may see small stipulated uh, red areas uh, that will be called as the punctation. Punctation and uh, the mosaics also so the broad uh, the dilated capillaries will usually give the appearance on the cervix as a mosaic appearance that is uh, compared to a tiles mosaic tiles. So, it is called as mosaic appearance. Mosaics and punctations all these things are something like a maybe pre-invasive lesions you have to take a biopsy and uh, rule out pre-invasive cervical cancer. Lucas iodine is another uh, very important lotion which is prepared from 1 gram of iodine and 2 gram of potassium iodine in uh, 300 ml of water. The glycogen in the cells will take a dark mahogany brown color uh, which will be iodine positive or called as Schiller's negative test also. If there is an abnormal area then usually it will not become mahogany brown color, it will be uh, orange color or something yellow color. If the bright uh, mahogany brown color always says that uh, patient can understand if you explain that your tissues are healthy, it does not have much cancer lesions which is developing in the uh, tissues inside. So, the Lugas iodine application here you can see here over this picture, after application of the Lugas iodine you can see this uh, normal squamous epithelium has become brown. I told you this columnar epithelium is a grape like uh, long elongated cells, they will never take these tissues because uh, they do not have any glycogen, only the squamous cells will take the brown color. This is a normal a corposcopy finding we can say when we give the uh, report. Here one more picture you can see here because this lot of inflammation is there totally it has not taken all the brown color here you can see partly yellow color also. Most of the time we will have taken a biopsy if there is a doubt whether it is a normal or abnormal cervix which is looking. So, the capillary distance also is studied and a lot of uh, the size and uh, cervical gland openings which are seen sometimes are very important and uh, we usually put them as pre-invasive cervical intraepithelial neoplasia CAN1, CAN2 to 3 or CAN5 depending on lot of this C I told you about the color of the acetovite area, the iodine positivity, the vessels, these criteria and the size of the acetovite area all these things are put together. We grade them and we give a score and we usually diagnose them as CAN1, CAN2 or CAN3. CAN1 usually it uh, uh, it uh, goes off by itself by the body immunity only you need not treat it. If you repeat after some time the colposcopy you may not see the CN1 they are usually self limiting diseases and CN2 and 3 are something like they may progress some percentage of them about 40 percent can progress to CN3 also. So, the classification and all these things like will be done and the directed biopsy is one thing when there is a lesion you are suspecting take a biopsy and send it to the this one here you can see how we are taking a biopsy here. We are using the biopsy forceps and taken a biopsy from this area to take it to the histopathology report. Our uh, women population should understand it more and subject themselves for pap smear and later on for any colposcopy test and safeguard themselves from getting into the cervical cancer which is the number one killer of our women among the women cancers. So, we have to kill this cancer before it kills our women with all these modalities of pap smear and colposcopy. Thank you.